In an attempt to get the most out of my A4H2O PC, I did some research and learned about some hacks other people did that I thought are worth doing. So I wanted to share it in a video. What you'll be seeing aren't in any official documentation though, so how you'll achieve these configurations may vary. Nonetheless, I hope this video will be helpful for you. In the A4H2O manual and product page, it says that you can only add one SSD behind the bottom cover. But if you have enough space, you can actually add two by using these. These are SSD brackets that I bought from AliExpress and two SSDs can be held together by screwing the brackets into the sides. These are actually optional as you can place two SSDs inside the case without it. I just want things to look a little bit cleaner. After attaching the bracket to both SSDs, the total thickness of this setup is around 17 millimeters. One other thing that you have to do is to route the connectors like this so you won't have any problems plugging the SSD back in. You just have to make sure that this part of the case has enough leeway for the connectors to run through. If the clearance is good, it's just a matter of screwing the back cover and you're good to go. That's it. Pretty straightforward hack if you need more storage. A challenge you might face when doing this setup is if you're using ribbon cables instead of braided ones as it's going to take up more space in the bottom compartment. I don't think you'll have a problem if you're using custom cables though. So if you don't have space in your bottom compartment, you can actually add SSDs behind the front cover. Credit goes to that man over at PC Part Picker for this hack. I placed a link to his entry if you want to check it out. So to do this mod, all you have to do is to first make sure that you have enough clearance on the GPU compartment, and second, you have to route the SATA power and data connectors to the front. What I have here is the tough card, which is around 299mm in the spec sheet. Given its length, I managed to fit in two SSDs instead of one while using the same brackets from the previous configuration. Natman mentioned that he stuck some double-sided tape to the cover, but I decided to just friction fit it instead. What's left is to place the SSDs in and reattach the front cover. I know this setup is a bit unconventional, but at least you have an alternative in case you don't have any space in the bottom compartment. The only challenge that you'll face with this setup is if your graphics card is over 300mm or if it reaches the front cover. If that's the case, then I'm not sure if it's possible for you to place another SSD in there. So what I have here are the Fantex T30s and I'm going to swap the two NFA 12x25s that I initially attached. Yes, I can confirm that it fits with a few minor adjustments. Credits to Tony Casaro here on YouTube and Snapwitch on Reddit for sharing this configuration. Links to their content in the description below. When swapping the fans, make sure to use the screws that came in with the T30s. So initially the T30s will hinder you from closing the bracket because the pads will be interfering the center bar inside the case. To squeeze the fan and radiator in, all you have to do is to remove the inner vibration pads both at the top and the bottom side of the fans. It's up to you if you want to remove all of the pads. I found that if you just remove the inner pads, it will fit in either way. Luckily, you can daisy chain a T30 so cable management is a little bit easier. Then all you have to do is to plug the connectors to the header and the motherboard. In my case, I just went ahead and plugged it into the splitter that I routed back then. You'll find out if you try screwing back the bracket, it'll bend a little bit, but I don't think it'll cause any problems in the future. As long as the clearances are good, you'll be able to attach the top cover panel with no problems. As for the thermal performance of this configuration, I'll talk about it later in the video. So the last configuration in this video involves adding a fan behind the bottom covers. All credit goes to l one here on YouTube and Gamison on Reddit for sharing their configurations. Again, I left the links to their content in the description below. What I have here is the Noctua NFA 9x14 and I managed to fit it in the bottom since I have just enough space for this configuration to work. There actually aren't any dedicated screw holes for the fans at the bottom, so I just relied on friction fitting the fans as I closed the bottom cover. 
I managed to close the covers with the fan as intake no problem, but it was a little bit of a challenge for me placing the fan as exhaust. In my case, I had to use one of the grills cause the cables were hitting the fins when I fully close it. I also had to flip the bottom cover just to get every inch of space I could to fit the fans in. If you're planning to do this configuration, I suggest having custom cables first so you won't have any problems with clearance. And with those fan configurations in mind, how did it perform? Here are some rough numbers that I got while running Cinebench R23 and Furmark for half an hour in parallel. Just a disclaimer before anything else, I still have a lot to learn on how to conduct these tests so take these results with a grain of salt. And even if you have the same setup, the results you'll get probably may vary from mine. Okay, so I really can't draw a different conclusion on these just yet because the configurations that I've shown are a little bit unique. Also, as you can see, the difference in the temperature across components between the setup with and without the bottom fan is only by a degree, so you can take it either as an error or as something negligible. I'd like to think that the indifference in temperatures are caused by the cables taking up the space, therefore impeding airflow. That's just purely my assumption, so don't count me on that. One change that I'll gladly accept though is the 2-4 to four degree difference when I change the fans from the NFA 12x25 to the Fantex T30s. All of the results I got had the fans running at 1700 RPM. At 2000 RPM with the T30s, the temperatures peaked at 67 and 59 degrees for the CPU and GPU respectively. With that, I'm not so sure if I can get the temps any lower unless I go full custom with my build. But overall, I'm satisfied with the results for now. So the configuration that I currently have in my PC are as follows. I kept the T30s and placed the two SSDs behind the front cover while leaving the bottom compartment empty in case I want to test the fans again or if I want to add more SSDs. I'll probably explore something like this again in the future if ever I get new hardware or custom cables or if I learn something new. Let me know your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section below. That's pretty much it for this video and if ever there is one, see you on the next build.